Fellas, we've just been announced a massive fight in the middleweight division between Kamara Usman and Hamzat Chemaev, which I still can't believe that fight's been announced. It's honestly better than the Paolo Costa fight. But one thing I've noticed about the middleweight division, now you can diss it, you can say that it's a slow division, the talent isn't that good there, it's a boring division. But one thing you've got to admit, the division has a lot of chads. Today we're going to be talking about why does the middleweight division in the UFC have so many chads and you'll find out what I mean because I feel like this division, like I said, it might not be stacked with the most talent but it's stacked with the most chads. Please let me know your thoughts on the division, especially now that Kamara Usman's moving up to fight um, Hamzat Chemaev, which I'm going to do a prediction video uh, coming up to the week. But anyway, first chad, Deshaun Strickland, man. Middleweight, Sean Strickland's got to be the biggest chad. I mean, first of all, gets destroyed by Kamara Usman, and now he's the champion, and Kamara Usman's fighting Hamzat Chemaev to determine whether he gets a fight with Strickland. Um, it's crazy. He beat Adesanya because he felt like it. He beat Adesanya because he felt like it. Lost to Alex Pereira because he couldn't be bothered beating him. He's lost to, you know, Kamara Usman, couldn't be bothered beating him. Everyone wanted Adesanya to stop being champ. Strickland just comes in and beats him because he felt like it. Easy as that simply beat Adesanya, it wasn't even like a fluke knockout or anything, he just dominates him for five rounds straight, um, and he's got no filter as well, you look at his Twitter, you look at his, you know, his press conference highlights, and by the way, can we talk about his press conferences, whenever Sean Strickland's in a press conference, he makes the press conference, he is the greatest of all time when it comes to press conference, the two press conferences that he's been in, I mean, he dominated Adesanya in both of them, maybe it's just the Adesanya effect there, that when you, whenever you're in an, a press conference with Adesanya, with Adesanya, it's kind of impossible to lose to him, but that's what I think about Sean Strickland, he's got no filter, and he's a real American as well. He's a real American, you know, he's not one of these, you know, modern 2023 beta males. He, he, he's the definition of an alpha male. He's the definition of an alpha male, a proper American, uh, the eagle. And he'll go for everyone and anyone. Doesn't matter if you're, doesn't matter what, you know, doesn't matter what weight class, who you are. He's going to go for everyone and anyone. Adesanya's getting shared. Um, other people in the division are getting shared. He'll go for everyone. Even um, oh, what was it? I forgot who he's called, but one of the the what the light heavyweights were getting shared by him as well. But Sean Strickland, even Nina, uh, the interviewer Nina was getting shared from Sean Strickland, and so was her boyfriend. This guy just goes for everyone. He has no shame about it, no filter. He has he doesn't care about what he says. He'll just say anything he wants, and he doesn't care. And for me, he's got to be one of the biggest chads in the UFC. I still can't believe he's champion. If you'd have told me a year ago that Sean Strickland would have been champion, it, like he like a year ago from now he was just one of those npcs that kind of make the video game more interesting and now he's gone from that to being the main character he's literally the trevor from gta 5 but i'm gonna have sean strickland in there as one of the biggest chads in the ufc and next up i'm going chad marvin vittori skill wise first of all can we talk about his chin actually he refuses to get knocked out all the beating he's taking he's taking shots from paulo costa israel adesanya jared cannonier this guy's chin roman delidze this guy's chin just doesn't it, it doesn't break. He's got one of the best chins in the UFC. I think he's got the second best in the UFC right now, just behind Max Holloway. He just refuses to get knocked out. Put Francis Ngannou in there with him. Put Derek Lewis, Sergei Pavlovich, anyone in there. Chad Marvin Vittori is not getting knocked out. He's got one of the best chins. He's kind of like, he's, I see him, he's, he's one of the biggest Twitter warriors. You can already see a tweet that I put on the screen. I'm not going through every single one of his tweets, but Marvin Vittori, I'd love to see him versus Paolo Costa rematch on Twitter because maybe in press conferences, he's not that good. You know, the one he had with Adesanya was kind of cringy, but when it comes to actual Twitter, he's one of the best. He's got to be ranked in the Twitter. You know, he's got to be somewhere in the Twitter rankings and he's climbing it with the things that's coming out. Again, just like Strickland, he doesn't care about who he upsets. doesn't care about anyone. Comes for every victim as well. doesn't matter if you're victimized. I mean, there's a whole war going on right now and you've got Chad Marvin Vittori. You know, he's dissing people from there as well. He's got some based opinions. Chad Marvin Vittori, you've got to put him up there as well. Now, maybe it's just everyone who Adesanya has a rivalry with is somewhat based or somewhat of a Chad. But Marvin Vittori, I mean, look at him. He's got the sharpest jawline in the UFC outside of Drew Dober. Chad Marvin Vittori, if this guy, maybe he needs to stop being a bit of a bore. He's, he's he, you know, he's not the most skilled fighter. He's, a, he's, he's kind of like the gatekeeper. If you beat Marvin Vittori, fair play, you're a top-level fighter. If you lose to Marvin Vittori, you're not. But for me, Marvin Vittori is definitely one of the biggest Chads in the UFC. Next, we have poor Tom Pajera. Now, he is a light heavyweight now, so I guess I'm still going to include him, though. The reason he left middleweight is to save the light heavyweight division. Alex Pereira, you know, he just dominated Adesanya 3-0. and It was getting too easy for him. He saw that the light heavyweight division was in shambles. Yuri Prohaska was injured. Jamal Hill was injured. 
and Kalayev was about to get a title shot. Pereira saw that and thought, you know what? I'm going to save the division. Purposely got knocked out by Adesanya just to save the light heavyweight division. I mean, it doesn't get more Chad than that. Um, so for me, you've got to put Portan Pereira up there. He was one of the biggest middleweight chads. And the fact that he was so big in the middleweight division, he, he was out, you know, like, you know, you saw Robert Whittaker. Have you seen the size of that fella? Massive. One of the biggest middleweights ever. He could literally make heavyweight and he sat there in the middleweight division against skinny Adesanya. Um, and he's the most stoic fighter in the UFC. It doesn't get more stoic than him. He's the definition of a Chad. He is the most stoic fighter in the UFC. He has no emotion, no matter what. If he's winning a fight, if he's just won the belt, if he's just been brutally knocked out, if his wife's had a new kid, it's going to be the same stone face, no emotion whatsoever. And he's the most dedicated hater. Can we talk about how he's the most dedicated hater to Adesanya? Beats him three times. Or beats him two times in kickboxing. Follows him to the UFC to win the belt off him. Then he goes out there and beats Jan Blachowicz, the only other guy in the UFC to beat Israel Adesanya. And then he's, you know, he's bored of Adesanya being the champion, so he personally trained Sean Strickland to beat Adesanya. And now he's, he's got to be the most dedicated hater in the UFC. I saw that Israel Adesanya, Israel Adesanya was training with uh, Logan Paul, so now Alex Pereira has been training with Dylan Dennis. It's crazy, man. He's the most dedicated hater in the UFC, and he trains in the jungles, man. He's not on this Twitter. He's not like a Marvin Vittori on, on, on Twitter. He trains in the jungles. Still the most dedicated hater in the UFC, but poor Tom Pereira. He's one of the biggest chads. He, technically, he's a light heavyweight now, but that's only because he wanted to save the middleweight division. Next up, I kind of feel bad about um, adding this guy to the list because he literally just pulled out of a fight, but I'm going with Secret Juice Costa. Listen, everyone's probably mad at him because, you know, he just... He just pulled out of a big fight, but at least we get to see Kamaru Usman versus Hamzat, which for me is a way bigger fight than Costa versus Hamzat. This guy angers everyone on Twitter. He's ranked, he's the champion. He's the pound for pound number one on Twitter. Now you can you can say that you know Twitter's nothing, but he's the best on Twitter. The fact that he can barely speak English as well just makes his tweets so much better. He's been going for Adesanya on Twitter, roasting Adesanya. Even the things that he's posting about Dana White and Rose Nama Yunus on Twitter is just crazy. Going for Hamzat Chemaev. Um, even now, Brian Ortega with Tracy Cortez. He literally stole Tracy Cortez from Ortega because he felt like it. He's an absolute chad. Yeah, Twitter champion, pound for pound champion on Twitter. And he still won't fight, but he still gets talked about. I mean, can we talk about how many times this guy's pulled out? He just pulled out against Hamzat Chemaev. Before that, it was Ikram Aliskarov at UFC 291. Before that, it was Robert Whittaker. I swear he pulled out against Jared Kadenir as well. Shows up to the Marvin Vittori fight. And it's forced to become a catchweight fight because he missed weight. I mean, could we just talk about that as well? Always missing weight. Barely even a middleweight nowadays. I think he should move up to light heavyweight. I mean, is, is this guy going to even meet, uh, what's it called, make weight? And the fact that he's clearly on steroids, he's clearly on the secret juice, but USADA can't do anything about it. And talking of USADA, they're not even with the UFC anymore. So we might even just see a bigger version of Costa. But, um... <coughs> I'm going with I'm going with Secret Juice Costa, but I'm literally coughing over it because Costa's he's just got that Chad energy about him, man. Yeah, won't fight, but still gets talked about. Costa definitely one of the biggest Chads in the division. And next, I'm going with Real African Drika Stuplessy. He's definitely a Chad, right? He's definitely a Chad. He went from being the guy that no one really knew about. You know, no one really knew about Drikas. But yeah, you've got to include Drika Stuplessy. Like I said, he's the best worst fighter as well. Like. He, Drika Stuplessy, when he fights, he doesn't look great. Or maybe before the Whitaker fight, he never really looked great. He was kind of struggling to get Darren Till out of there and Derek Brunson out there. But it works. He's finished all, all of his last three fights. Um, and he's working. What he's doing, he's working what he's doing. So, And he's about to become champion as well. Listen, we can praise Sean Strickland all we want. But let's be completely honest. Um, if I had to bet money, I'm going to bet it on Drika Stuplessy. Although... It depends on if Dana White wants to give him a title shot because we hear, like I said, that the winner of Hamzat Chemaev and Usman is going to get the title shot, which means Jurikas is probably going to have to fight Adesanya or something. But either way, I think he, if I reckon he was going to become champion either way, and he demolished a gatekeeper Whitaker as well. Robert Whitaker smoked everyone, you know, Jared Cannonier, uh, Derek Brunson. Uh, what's his name? Marvin Vittori even had a really close fight with Israel Adesanya, Yo Romero. And then real African Drikas Duplessis just comes in there, demolishes him. Um, and he's more African than Adesanya. You've got Adesanya trying to call himself the real African of the UFC. And then Drikas gets spawned into the UFC just to expose Adesanya for not being as African as he is. So for me, Drikas Duplessis is definitely up there with one of the biggest chads. And finally, I'm going with Beju Craig. 
Paul Craig, he's kind of another one of those guys that are the best and worst fighter. He always wins fights that he's supposed to lose and loses fights that he's supposed to win. Like, he's got wins over people like Jamal Hill and Magomed Ankalaev and Nikita Krylov, but then goes and loses to people. I know Johnny Walker's on a streak now, but he lost to Johnny Walker. Um, he lost to Volkan Uzdemir. It's really weird. I feel like a lot. I feel like if you lose to Paul Craig, that's kind of a good thing because it means you're a good fighter, if that makes sense. But he wins fights that he should probably lose, which is crazy. He put that his entire fighting style is to pull guard and pray. He pull guard. He pulls guard, prays that it works. A lot of the time, it does work, and if it doesn't work, well, that's a shame. He'll lose the fight. That's literally his goal. And I reckon he's actually going to climb the middleweight rankings. Obviously, you got a win over. Um, oh, I forgot his name, but he got a, a win over that Brazilian guy at UFC, uh, was it Aspinal Tabura, on the Aspinal Tabura card, um, and yeah, it, it, I reckon he's going to keep climbing the rankings, I mean, he just beat a grappler, and yeah, I think he's the best grappler in the division, well, best grappler when it comes to terms of jiu-jitsu, I mean, obviously there's people uh, like Hamzat, Jemayev, Kamaru, Usman, but the middleweight division is starting to become interesting again, but he's definitely one of the best grapplers in the division, and he's the face-off goat. He, he has some of the best faces. I don't know if you've ever seen a Paul Craig fight, but if you look at Paul Craig before the fight starts, he has some of the best face-offs, some of the most intense face-offs in the UFC. Even at the press conference, when he's got the Scottish flag on his face, he's got some intense face-offs. So for me, Paul Bedju Craig has got to be one of the biggest chads. But for me, that's why the UFC middleweight division has so many chads. It's hard to understand why, but I don't know. This division is just packed with chads. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on this division and if you agree. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching.